G'day Ziggy D here, back with part 16 of the Path of Exile Survival Guide. In the last episode, we got into Cruel and uh, made our start by progressing to ledge, doing a bit of ledge farming, and then uh, doing some of the side quests in Cruel after we leveled up a little bit. We also bumped into two exiles and managed to get a couple nice pieces of gear. We have a few uh, pretty decent pieces now. I'd still like to upgrade a few pieces pretty soon. The uh, belt, although it has some life, doesn't really have too much else on it that's helping us out. And we need, just need some more general upgrades all out. Not be nice to get a better chest at some point soon as well. But uh, for the most part we're looking okay and uh, the only other thing we want to do is start thinking about buying some of the uh, additional support gems we might need or something like a Jade Flask would actually be really good. Now something I've done for my character here as you can see, BAM! I made myself a bit of a shopping list and I uh, just wrote down the things that I'll need that I can't really get from quest rewards. I do get weapon elemental damage, faster attacks and life leech from quest rewards however I only get, I can only get max one of each or two two of one and then have to miss out on one. I get all three of these available, but I kind of have to make a decision between them. So I'm eventually going to want to buy extra ones of these, so one Alc to one Chaos approximately for that sort of thing. Probably going to need to buy one added fire at least to put on my Frenzy single target attack. That might be a good one to buy straight away. I know I did find an Alc last episode, so we could buy that. Otherwise, uh, Lightning Warp could be good for increased mobility and we can eventually buy that. And uh, the Jade Flask is something I want. I could buy a Granite Flask and use that, but Granite cl Flasks are actually super expensive now because it's been discovered that they're useful in a certain recipe. So, Jade Flask would probably be the way to go and they'll cost one Alc to one Chaos and that will be a nice armor boost for us and help us tank things like Brutus. So, I'm probably going to try and buy a Jade Flask this episode. We'll see how I go and I'll let you guys know how that goes. But for now, we're going to head onwards towards Brutus. So we have to do the climb and go through the prisons and things like that. Alright, so I put my tendrils out there and uh, posted my offer for buying a Jade Flask for one Alc in a few of those chats. We'll see if we get any bites, uh, but first we'll go to head to the ledge. We can just, uh, we can actually just do progression while we wait to get offers back from that. Again, taking the pointy side to go towards Brutus. <laughs> Accidentally went the wrong way there. So as you'll see, this character's really started hitting its stride now. It's actually started to get to the point where it's really fun. It's uh, settled into blood magic pretty nicely now. We still need some extra supports and things to make like a single target attack, for example, a bit more exciting than this. It's a little bit, little bit slow at the moment. Added fire or faster attacks are going to make that really shine. But our AOE is starting to look pretty fantastic when we combine it with, uh, you know, a curse there. We, we will one-shot a lot of packs at this point, even, you know, when we're in a fairly oh, level-appropriate zone. Occasionally we'll just smash things like that. The bigger the pack, the more damage we're doing now as well, so it's uh, starting to get to that really fun point to play, and uh, it's pretty pretty enjoyable. Uh, I've been uh, keen to jump back on and do a little bit more of this series. So, I did gain a level. I'm going to uh, finish killing off this skeleton before we allocate it, but I just want to take this chance to uh, mention, I'll grab this life node here, 12%, because it's a really fantastic life node, uh, that I did update the uh, the forum, the official forum thread for this build with some uh, additional progression guides for the skill tree. I had a lot of requests to show basically every 20 points how I allocate those points. You guys have probably seen it in this series, you know how I went about doing that, but if you ever want to review it without having to search through the videos for the specific points I allocate, then you can check those out and you'll find the link for that in the description below. Basically like, you know, here's where you put your points at level 20, here's where you put your points at level 40 and a brief description of where we're going. So I'm probably happy to head into the climb now. We're level 39 and we've got pretty decent gear since we uh, ran into those exiles. But uh, if you didn't happen to get enough gear, like you didn't run into any exiles yourself, then maybe you'll want to stick around in ledge for a little while and farm some nice gear. The uh, level in ledge is really good for uh, getting yourself a few upgrades. You get yourself a nice weapon, get yourself a nice new tiers of armor. I think like uh, 36 or something is where some good stuff starts dropping, so uh, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good spot to farm. Now, the same as in normal, this zone's actually still pretty dangerous and cruel as well, so we want to make sure our resists are pretty good. Uh, fire resist to 52, which I'm pretty satisfied with. Our lightning resist a little bit low, though, and some of these goat men, I think, use shock nova, so... I want to be careful of that, but uh, most for the most part, it's just the, the uh, fire resist we want to worry about. And uh, 50 is good enough, good enough. But if you're a little bit lower than that, if you're like 10 or 20 fire resist after coming into Cruel, which isn't that unusual, if it's, it can be a bit hard to stack resist when you first get into Cruel, then uh, you want to be super careful of all these fireballing guys. The molten shells, especially if you're in close range, they'll uh, do a ton of damage when they go off. And uh, also the exploding dogs as well do a fair bit of de fire-based degeneration. So you can do a bit of farming in here, or otherwise you could just skip through here, same as we did. 
I think I might kill off Iron Point for fun. He's uh he's pretty dangerous. He hits pretty hard, and we don't have a Granite Flask or a Jade, Jade Flask to tank him with. Uh, enemies like this, as we move forward, so once we get those Jade Flasks or Granite Flasks, uh, we can simply pop those to stand and face tank these guys. But until we get that, we're kind of just relying on our base arm or our other tactics like uh, you know temporal chaining and using our decoy totems and things like that to distract them. But uh, this guy's not too bad to deal with overall. We can use a decoy totem in the doorway here to block Chatters. Oh no, he got he slug, he slipped through. Oh no, Chatters is still uh, exceptionally dangerous if he manages to get that freeze off in here. Thankfully, though, as a ranged character, we have the uh, the solid advantage in Path of Exile being able to kite enemies like this. Ranged definitely added an advantage when it comes to uh, defensive capability in Path of Exile. Wow, those gloves are not bad. I just got those from Chatters. Uh, really high damage rolls, and I'm six to twelve and six to ten cold. But uh, our current one has a nice, uh, a nice roll on it. It's got uh, some, some more art resist and a little bit of life. It's actually pretty competitive against our current gloves. Hmm, could potentially be worth using. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's a tough choice. That one. Let me uh, have a look, a bit more of a look at these guys once we actually kill this skeleton off. Deciding, you know, it's it's okay to use uh, off type. Uh, gear, so this is energy shield. It's actually not going to be too bad for us We're going to lose some armor from it obviously because this has a pretty high uh, evasion rating of 95. Oops double cursing but uh It's okay to use it if the stats are considerably better, but I don't know if the stats are considerably better We have uh, slightly more damage slightly more life and uh, Slightly more resist now nah, less resist overall probably better off sticking with the current ones then the evasion probably makes a difference on that But not bad gloves not bad gloves uh, so this is the main thing you want to be careful of moving into the jail zone uh, here or the prison I should say uh, when you first when you when you're coming to cruel remember your resistance is going to be pretty low especially myself uh, my lightning resist is actually capped so I'm doing well but if you are uh be aware of if your lightning resist is low, because jumping into a room full of these skills are just here that fire lightning arrows uh, can t can get you kind of one shot, especially if they happen to uh, shock stack you. It's mainly mainly a problem if you're close to the walls, because lightning arrow, as we know, procs off the walls. So if you're standing, you know, coming in against a doorway and all of them fly are on the doorway or something like that and hit you, they're all going to proc on you, and uh, it's much harder to dodge that way. So in avoiding these guys, you want to kind of stay in the middle of the room if possible, and you're going to eat a lot less damage overall. But uh, just if you're lightning resist is okay then you're not really gonna have any problems with them all right so since I didn't have any bites on a uh, request for a jade flask something else I think I would probably worth getting is actually improving our single target damage so I'm gonna try and get either faster attacks or added fire for frenzy and we'll see if we have any luck with that instead uh, one elk should get either one of those uh, add fire especially will go for one elk sometimes faster attacks will go for one chaos but we'll see how we go I'm not too familiar with the uh, the current the uh, prices currently on domination but we'll see how I go that's a reasonable offer I think Oh, I'm loving these domination shrines for the uh, <laughs> increased mob density. I really wish these were in Nemesis as well. I, I quite enjoy them for themselves, but also just for the, the uh, big cluster of mobs you get around them. It's like mm, nice juicy packs of XP. <laughs> Alright, there's level 40 and a nice 30 round 30 topaz ring. I also found a nice round 30 coral ring. Two perfect rings here we could craft. And uh, our two stone ring here is... It's not bad, but uh, we could potentially get like a life roll on this, a double life roll on a coral ring, or extra damage on either one of these guys could be pretty good. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. I guess we could try and use a transmute now on one. Let's see if we get anything on the coral ring. Ooh, leeched his life. Nice. That's actually really good for us. If we can uh, augment that and get a nice prefix on it, it'll be pretty nice as well. Now, for our passive... The best thing I can probably get in terms of efficiency right now is to actually get uh, the extra frenzy charges now. As I was saying, my single target DPS is a little bit lacking at the moment. So uh, getting an extra frenzy t charge with a uh, frenzy means that we can uh, stack those up higher and get more damage out of frenzy. Each frenzy st uh, stack has its own you know, benefits, but with the frenzy skill, it actually gets uh, added benefit for that as well. Like we get uh, additional damage per f additional damage and attack speed on the skill itself per frenzy stack that we have. So it kind of amplifies out there pretty well. And uh, that, that'll be a nice boost for that, which uh, since we're about to go fight uh, Brutus, <laughs> could be pretty helpful. No bites on uh, added fire or faster attacks or anything like that at the moment. It might just be a bad time for trading. Might I uh, have to end up using PoE XYZ to see if I can find a seller. But uh, let's go fight Brutus. So I just switched out to life gain on hit for Frenzy now since we're just going to be fighting Brutus in this room. And I'll just use my usual Temporal Chains decoy totem uh, stat uh, method here. But uh, Brutus himself is actually pretty good to deal with if you can get him into the right position. 
There we go, that's kind of what we want. If we can get him to just keep standing there doing his chain pull, we need to... Oh, he's desynced. Wow! Massive desync. Alright, if we can get him up here somewhere, I can use my, uh... Just, just sort of side-to-side -side kite and avoid that there. There we go, that's what we want. Just keep doing your chain pulls. Perfect. This is how you take care of Brutus. <laughs> it's a really easy fight once you kind of get calm about it and get the uh, mechanics of it down. You can kind of very reliably dodge that. As long as you, your attack speed isn't, you know, abysmal. But, uh... Pretty easy to do, you just kind of keep your distance and keep moving side to side. If he does pull you, just, you know, pot and move away. If you've got a, if you've got a uh, Quicksilver Flask, you can use that. Or if you've got a Granite or a Jade Flask, you can use that to uh, give yourself some extra armor in case you do get slammed. But for the most part, fighting Bruce just isn't too scary. So I'll just continue to work him down. As long as I hit him every now and then, I'm going to keep my four Frenzy stacks up as well. There we go, you got to get the rhythm of it up again. <laughs> there we go, that's the rhythm I want. Come on! Yep, Chain Pull. Whoops, I missed. Chain ball. Yep, very good. Good rhythm. I like it. Brutus, let's do this. Let's make some music. <laughs> I wonder if I could get greedy and get two hits in. Nah, no, I should probably just play it safe. There we go. Let's just keep working him down there. Maybe I should get a projectile weakness in. Do a little bit more damage. Hope that didn't... Oh, that might... Um, I ruined the rhythm. I ruined the rhythm. <laughs> I shouldn't have broken the rhythm. <laughs> oh, no, I ruined it. <laughs> All right, we got the rhythm back. I used temporal chains to slow him down. There we go. That's come on. That's that's good. That's what we want. Perfect, perfect rhythm. Come on. Oh, Brutus, come on. Keep going. Don't ruin it. Now this is the super safe way of fighting him. Obviously, is to you know get that rhythm going to hit him in between each chain pull. Uh, of course, you can just attempt to face tank him. Uh, face tank him with this much life. Honestly, we can eat like two or three smashes from him without dying. And uh, we could probably get a few more hits in there each time. And uh, looks like I actually ate a hit there with I might have been a little bit desynced. But uh, it's not too difficult with this much sort of life. But uh, the safe I like to to practice the safest method because you know when you're fighting Cole on maps, uh, which is the harder version of him, you kind of want to have that strategy down. You want to have that avoiding of every single chain pull down because it becomes pretty important when the guy will hit you for like five k life. So. <laughs> Let's see if we get anything good here. Ooh, pretty low rolls on that fellow there. So I'd some of these guys. I might take some of these back to town just to sell, but we'll see if anything actually rolled here. Quite a few rares off him this time. Wow, that has a nice nice life roll and some resist. That's actually definitely worth using for us. So, let's go ahead and switch this out. See, even though it's armor ES, again, still worth using there. We're losing a little bit of armor overall, but our ES isn't actually that bad to stack, and having a bit of ES actually stops us from getting stunned as often, so it's pretty nice as well. Although I think we already have unwavering stance in this build, so I take that back. Oh, a nice life roll on the heavy belt as well, and uh, eh, flask effect duration. Is this actually better? No, I think our other one's better there. It's got uh, better rolls on the flasks and uh, a bit of extra energy shield as well. Still not bad, not bad. What's the implicit like? Yeah, the implicit on our one is better as well. But uh, Colossal, is Colossal the next one up? Colossal is the next one up, so we do want to start upgrading to our Colossal Flask here. I probably want to roll that with a Transmute first though. Let's check out the neck. Oh, 5 to 12 Fizz, but nothing else on it. A little bit of Fire Resist. And uh, we currently have Life and some Resist on this. Actually, that's not too bad. Ah, uh, no, nah, it's actually pretty bad. <laughs> Anything else here worth IDing? Oh, the helmet. I don't know if I want to switch out to an ES helmet, but our old one is pretty old. But it's got oh, it's got nice. I don't know. I'm not even gonna bother with that one. But uh, a few. We got a nice chest from it, so that's pretty good. And a few ones that had some potential, but uh, no luck on those. Let's uh, use our. Oh no, I'll save the chance. I'll save the chance. We're pretty low on currency drops on this character. We've been having pretty bad luck with that. So um. Wow, our ranger looks hilarious in this new armor. <laughs> We've been having pretty bad luck, so saving up chance orbs or things like that can actually, you know, you can convert those to chaos eventually. Once you get enough of them, you can trade those over. And uh, if we're not getting any luck with currency drops, we kind of might have to save up a bit more for when we do actually want to buy some uh, gear or items or things like that later on if we don't happen to have the right things drop for us. For the most part, though, we'll see how we go self-found, and uh, we'll only trade when we need to. So, having just killed Brutus, I should actually go back and... Uh, get my quest reward for that. Uh, although I'm not too excited because the quest reward for this one's actually not a big deal for us. We should also um, sell off all of this extra stuff we have. So bam, 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 bam. I'm not going to bother IDing some of those because we actually need some transmutes. And uh, let's get that stuff happening there. Cool, cool. And we'll get our quest reward. Now, I... I'm thinking for this, you know, you could do something like take Clarity and sell Clarity often sells for a Chaos, so if you wanted to take the time to do a bit of extra trading, that's a pretty good one to get. 
Uh, otherwise, I think probably we'll take Blood Rage. We can't use Blood Rage yet, and we won't be able to use it for a very long time. But because this build will have a lot of life regen at endgame, you can actually do something like run Blood Rage in lower level maps, or when you're farming Lunaris and things like that. It gives you, a, you know, your Frenzy Charge is a lot easier, and uh, gives you extra leech and... Uh, uh, extra attack speed and things like that. So it's uh it's it's not too bad to run just for that extra sort of farming speed. It's our passive point. And uh, I must have forgot to grab that earlier. What should we get with our passive point? I'm pretty sure we should start heading up to resolute technique now. Actually, what's our uh, accuracy at? We're still 92% accuracy. Do we have some accuracy on our gear, or uh, am I just uh, doing pretty lucky getting pretty? Yeah, I got some accuracy on my helmet, so that's probably helping out a bit. But uh, we're still staying pretty good with our accuracy, so we don't need to rush for Resolute Technique just yet. I could consider heading up and getting the range of damage and grabbing an extra Frenzy Charge up there. Uh, I have a few choices. Going to what We do want to go towards Resolute Technique and uh, Static Blows pretty soon, and there's lots of nice life nodes and things like that to get up there. But uh, it might actually be worth... We could duck into the Duelist, or we could duck into this. You have a few choices here. This is We've gotten the essential things out of the way. We've got Blood Magic. We eventually want to get Resolute Technique once our accuracy starts to drop below like 90 to 85%. But uh, heading up in here, we would give us some more move speed, and attack speed could be really nice. Going up to get Fury Bolt's going to give us a lot of damage. Otherwise, we could jump through here and grab all of these nodes here are really fantastic, and there's life nice life nodes here as well, in addition to an extra Frenzy Charge. Uh, I think I will go... Hmm, I think I'll go up through the Frenzy Charge and we'll grab the Frenzy Charge at least and go up into Aspect of the Eagle at least. So I think I'll actually push pretty hard now. I c I'm like doing pretty well in terms of gear. There's not too much I need to do to farm up. So what I mean, that means is I'm going to be rounding up mobs as much as possible, killing off primarily blues or really large packs. Like I'm probably going to skip this unique just because he's going to take a very long time to kill and not really going to give me that much benefit, especially since I don't really need uh, loot. If he gets low while I'm killing this pack, maybe I'll kill him. But uh, for the most part, I'm just going to push through really quickly to Mervale and... Uh, eh, I don't like doing the Flicker Striker quest for Fairgraves uh, un until after we've done Mervale, maybe, because uh, that's a pretty tough one. So maybe we'll just push straight to Mervale. We can at least get our quest reward from before Mervale before doing it, which will actually be pretty helpful for us. So uh, no reason not to push pretty hard now. Push our character a little bit, see how they go in terms of survivability. So since we'll be doing the Fairgraves quest uh, later, we want to make absolutely sure we grab this waypoint now. Now it's usually somewhere near the Fairgraves quest, which you can identify this, as this little up ramp area here. He stands up in there. And uh, the waypoint will usually be somewhere in the vicinity of this, somewhere around here. So make sure you grab that. Uh. Now also be pretty careful in this zone. The rowers charge do a lot of physical damage. Our armor's pretty good, but they still hit really hard. And uh, there's lots of cold damage to watch out for as well. The waves, uh, the, the mobs that cast waves, they're not too bad by themselves, but if they spawn with less multiple projectiles, they're pretty dangerous. And uh, also, the combination of getting frozen and uh, charged by a bunch of rowers or something like that's pretty nasty. And something like this, where you've got allies deal extra physical damage and rowers in the same vicinity. <laughs> that's something you really want to watch out for. So uh, just be careful of this zone. It's pretty, pretty, pretty dangerous. But for the most part, we just want to head to the north until we find the, the coastline, and then follow that to the next entrance. Same as usual. So I've had a few people ask questions like, uh, you know, why it looks like I'm being so careful on this character. You know, why why, is, why does it look like I'm kind of struggling, you know, t taking things extra carefully, trying to avoid so much damage. And uh, the reason for that is I am indeed being super overly cautious uh, with this play. And the reason for that is I just want to uh, really highlight and show off uh, the things that are potentially dangerous, even if they're not particularly dangerous for this character, for me. Because I wanted this guy to appeal to both people who were playing for the very first time, and I really want to show off the things that have the potential to be dangerous to those people. So, you know, being... Being super cautious at something like these guys spitting out these body projectiles, which does a lot of damage. It can do a lot of damage, even though I could probably eat a ton of them. Uh, it really highlights the fact that these, this is something you need to watch out for, especially moving forwards or if your character's under geared, something you want to be careful of. So that highlights that thing, really constantly talking about resistances, highlights that as a danger, like if your character has low resistances, even if mine doesn't, trying to avoid elemental damage and being super aware of these things uh, is going to make you a better player overall. And then the other reason for this is I want people this to be friendly for people who are you know trying out hardcore for the first time as well. To just kind of show off what careful play looks like, what you can expect to do, and how you can avoid a lot of these forms of damage instead of just face tanking in them and then accidentally dying at some point because you don't quite have enough life or mitigation. So uh, learning to avoid these attacks first I think is a really important skill, and then learn to mitigate them on your character. 
Okay, so we've made our way into, uh, you know, the Cavern of Wrath zone here, got the waypoint, which is the uh, prerequisite for finishing this quest, the Siren's Last Cadence, or I think it's called, and uh, that means we can go and get our skill gem from Nessa. Now, we want to check, because we have some options here, I believe. We've got faster attacks, actually, no, faster attacks is the one we want. Okay, there's the next quest that also has faster attacks and uh, weapon elemental damage, and uh, I think there's a later one with faster attacks and life leech, or weapon elemental damage and life leech. So we do have some decisions later, but for now, we most definitely want faster attacks. Now this would be nice on our main AoE attack, but I think it's going to be better off on our... Uh, on our single target attack for now. So we've got Frenzy, we link that up with faster attacks, bringing the base up from 170 to uh, 210 or 211 there, and uh, it's also going to help with building up stacks. Faster attacks on Frenzy is really important because Frenzy gets better the more stacks you have, and Frenzy also builds up stacks, so the faster you can build those stacks up, the more damage you're going to do, and uh, that's pretty good stuff. So it's a nice support to get up there as well. Now, because it's also a really nice physical damage attack, uh, added fire which scales off physical damage is also a really nice support, so that'll probably be the next one we go for and we'll try and get a three link set up for that eventually and try and get a four link a uh, five link set up for our aoe attack at some point as well but uh that might be a little while off we'll see how we go let's just identify these two new things that we've got here that's uh that's not a bad bow it's got life leech fire damage and some increased physical but we already have a very nice deco bow which is a higher level one and does a ton of physical damage and uh that ring is terrible so, pretty good run. We made our way to uh, the start of Mervale. In the next episode, we'll actually head into and do Mervale. And, uh, or maybe we'll go back and do the uh, Flicker Strikers and uh, Fairgraves quest first for an extra passive point. And uh, then we'll progress our way into Cruel Act 2. Cruel Act 1 doesn't take too long as long as you can uh, get your gear kind of sorted and just be aware of the few things you need to watch for resists. But uh, Cruel Act 2 is a little bit more difficult. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.